I was born ready. Canelo Alvarez bulks up and looks massive in his new promo commercial with Hennessy. Stay tuned. Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. First, make sure you smash that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you want notifications, you want to be part of the Boxing Ego notification gang, hit that bell icon. Now, there's a big fight coming up. It's a fight we've been asking for as a boxing public. We've been clamoring for. And that's Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin. The two have sparred in the past, but Canelo was very young. This was many moons ago. This was before even the Austin Trout fight, the Floyd Mayweather fight, the Cotto fight. So it's going to be interesting September 16th to see where fighters, both fighters are going to be at and how much Canelo has learned since that time he is the man moving up Golovkin has known power at middleweight Canelo he got Chavez gun shy but he never really had him visibly on Queer Street or anything like that so it's, a, it's overall good fight the 50-50 fight on paper you can make a solid argument for both now you guys seen the title and you clicked on this video Canelo has partnered with Hennessy brand and they shot a, a promo commercial. I can't air it because it's not my commercial. I don't own the rights to it. And if you want to see it, the link will be in the description. Golden Boy, they put it on their verified Instagram account. But I was watching it and they had a couple of other Golden Boy stars like Joseph Jojo Diaz and Canelo. And he's kind of narrating it. First of all, Canelo is a true star. I mean, this is, we're talking about a guy from Guadalajara, Mexico, who doesn't speak much English, yet he's resonated with the people. You know what I mean? Ladies love him. Boxing fans like him. I mean, aside from last year when he vacated his belt, he got a lot of flack for that. But overall, he's just a big star. And he's he's definitely the, I'm not going to say he's the next Mayweather in terms of how he, st he fights and he lost to Mayweather, but he's the next biggest star. You know what I mean? I remember a couple years ago, people were saying, hey, when Pacquiao and Floyd retire, who has it? Is it going to be Adrian Broner? Is it going to be Canelo? We know now. Adrian Broner still to this day has not been on pay-per-view as a main event, right? Just a fun fact, because I know my boxing. The Broner fight versus Marco Celcino Maidana, that was actually initially a Showtime pay-per-view, but they switched it at the last minute and they put it on regular Showtime. So shout out to them for making that official and making it on regular Showtime for the public. And I, I just, that was actually a good card. That's the Keith Thurman fought on there in San Antonio, I believe. Keith Thurman knocked out Jesus Soto Carras on that card. It was a pretty stacked card. So honestly, with the Broner Maidana, Chino is one of my favorites. So I would have paid pay-per-view for it. You had Keith Thurman on the card and Broner fight with Maidana was a good fight. But anyway, we know now that since Floyd has, has been away from the sport the last two years, the biggest name is Canelo. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And you look at Triple G, both of his pay-per-view outings, I'm sure the Canelo Triple G is gonna do good because the fans want it, but Canelo's clearly the A-side. You look at Triple G's outings with Daniel Jacobs, I covered that fight live, and then you look at his other fight in New York, they did good in terms of ticket sales and selling out pre-sales and venue seats and stuff, but it didn't translate to a pay-per-view hit, right? And in fact, both of them did under 175,000, you know what I mean? Some reports, and I don't know because sometimes they inflate the number, but some reports are as low as 96,000 for the David Lemieux fight. So the Jacobs fight and the Lemieux fight were at least good fights on paper, but again, it did not resonate with the people and translate to a massive pay-per-view success in terms of the overall event. And that's evident by the numbers. You have Canelo Alvarez fighting Liam Smith, which is a fight that I detested. I didn't really like it. I didn't think it really did anything. Canelo, in my opinion, has beaten better guys than Liam Smith, more proven guys like Miguel Cotto, for instance. And I thought he thoroughly beat Cotto. I picked him to beat Cotto, but after seeing it, I really think he did his thing. And he had 51,000 people in attendance and 
10 million homes in Mexico or something crazy. So we all know Canelo is the A-side. And I don't know what they offer Triple G to make the fight happen because previous reports said $15 million wasn't good enough. But maybe they kind of reconsidered after having another pay-per-view flop in terms of the the total number. And it's, it's sad, too, because Triple G, he has an action style. Like I said, I was in New York. I was in the Garden. My first time being there. And the fight was fun. The co-main event was fun. Uh, Sor Rung Vasai versus Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. They were all good fights. It just, like I said, didn't translate to pay-per-view success. Same thing with War Kovalev. That wasn't record-breaking numbers. Uh, Terrence Crawford versus Victor Postal. Those, none of those were like great numbers, but they were good fights. Now, back to Canelo. He teamed up with Hennessy. I watched the promo. You guys can watch it if you click on the link in the description. And this dude looks massive. Like, his back looks huge. Golovkin might have some issue, man. Because, how do I say this without giving too much of seven reasons? One thing I noticed with boxing fans is they rarely, well, I can't say they, some of you guys in the comment section, you rarely intelligently break down fights in terms of you compare two things that literally have nothing to do with one another. You know what I mean? It'll be like, it won't, it'll be like apples and watermelon. And sometimes it's not even fruit. It'll be like apples and D batteries. D batteries! <laughs> Y'all don't know what that's from. But it doesn't even correlate a lot of times. You know what I mean? And people bring up, in my opinion at least, they bring up all the wrong things. Like, I told people time and time again, I thought Daniel Jacobs would be a very tough fight and clearly the toughest test for Golovkin. And whether you had him winning or losing, I was right. To this date, he gave Golovkin a scrap. He won more than one or two rounds. You know what I mean? Like some people, some people didn't even win one or two rounds against Golovkin, right? So it was clearly that. But people say, oh, you're hating. You're just, in, you're just partial to Jacobs because you know him and all this stuff. And people were bringing up the Dimitri Perot loss and stop it. Like, that was years ago. He's clearly has improved his game and matured as a man, as a person, survived cancer. You got to factor those things in. That's why I don't really I don't really care what it's cool to, to read people's account of what happened with the Canelo versus Triple G situation. But I said it before, I don't really care what happened in sparring because Canelo is clearly not the same fighter that he was when he was 19. And there's so much evidence of that. Not saying he didn't have some of the same intangibles, but this dude turned pro. You got to look at it. Like, really do the math. Canelo, he turned pro in Mexico at age 15. Some reports I, I read say 16, but we'll say 15 just to make it younger. He fought probably scrubs in Mexico, people that didn't have big names or, you know what I mean, club fighters, right? Age 15. If he sparred Golovkin when he was 19, that means he had been a, a pro for four years with no real amateur background. You know what I'm saying? Like, you people are like putting Vasil Lomachenko on the number one pound for pound list. Like, hey, look what he's done in nine fights. That's great for him. But at the same time, before he entered boxing, he was in a, in a, a, a boxing league or whatever where you can box and get paid. And before that, he had almost 400 amateur fights. So of course, it's it's not that it's not that shocking because he has his his experience is on the back end in the amateur program in the amateur circuit. You know what I'm saying? It's just like let's say I work at we'll use somewhere Circuit City, right? And I take over a store. The store manager gets fired for whatever poor performance. I get. I get the position and then I take over. I've never worked at Circuit City in my life, a day in my life, but I had similar jobs. I worked at CompUSA as a store manager or an operations manager. I worked at Best Buy. I worked at Good Guys, right? I worked at some kind of electronic stores. And basically it would probably be easy for me to transition into similar work, right? That's kind of why you have to fill out a resume when you when you apply for jobs they want to see your past work history and stuff like that so when you look at like a Lomachenko he has like 400 fights just in the amateurs and then he also did that other thing that's why he's 
he's a bit older than you would think based on um, how long he's only been pro a couple of years or whatever it's been. But Canelo, every fighter has their own journey. Canelo had to learn on the job, meaning he's figuring stuff out as he goes. So whatever he did when he was sparring Golovkin, if he's like 19, 20, that, that's, that's that. You know what I mean? But he, he's clearly learned on the job. And more evidence of it was look at people who gave him any level of problems. And then you look at if they were to fight now and tell me that he would have any issue with them. You know what I mean? Like Alfonso Gomez. I watched that fight. And if my memory serves correctly, Canelo had issue with Alfonso Gomez. He was trying to do some shoulder roll against the ropes. And he was getting tagged by Alfonso Gomez. And I thought it was a premature stoppage. He was he, he hurt Gomez, but I didn't think it needed to be stopped. I didn't think it was that important. But if Canelo were to fight Alfonso Gomez to today, he would destroy him. I think Gomez lost to um, Kama guy and stuff like that. Man, Canelo would eat him alive. But at the time, it made for a competitive fight. You know what I mean? You look at Jose Miguel Cotto, right? who is not even the the brother that's as recognized in the Cotto family and he was able to hurt the 19 18 year old Canelo push him against the ropes and the ropes kind of kept him up and he got buzzed right but then fast forward to the future Canelo's beating the better Cotto Miguel Cotto you know what I mean who was lineal middleweight champion at the time and had destroyed Sergio Martinez so is there anyone that believes that Jose Miguel Cotto could fight in a rematch against Canelo and have a chance? Probably not. I don't even know if he fights anymore, but hypothetically, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really care about the sparring. You guys seen the pictures throughout this video. Canelo's back looks huge. He's in shape. It's not a bodybuilding contest, but it just lets me know that this is probably where he should be. And it, I don't know how he was even making 154, 155, because it looks like his body has filled out to this division. He looks good at this weight. And like I said, a lot of people compare apples and D batteries, and they don't really break down these fights. They're like, huh, how can he hurt Golovkin if he, he never really hurt Chavez Jr.? Chavez Jr. is bigger than Golovkin. I'm not talking about pure skill. I'm talking about size, just mere size. Chavez Jr. is big. I've seen pictures of Golovkin next to Chavez Jr. Golovkin has a, has a 5'10", 5'10 and a half foot frame. Chavez is like 6'1", 6'2", or whatever he is. He looks pretty big to me, right? And he was clearly bigger than Golovkin. So a guy who has gained a lot of weight, we don't know what he rehydrated to on fight night, even campaigned and, and or at least had a fight at light heavyweight with Adana Stevenson or Adana Stevenson's recent knockout victim Andres Fanfara that's what I meant to say he's big you know what I mean we've never seen Golovkin fight at 170 plus I'm not talking about rehydration I'm talking about the contracted weight you know what I mean and I think Chavez missed that so he's he's a big dude so you, you gotta you gotta put things in perspective not to mention Canelo moved up from 154 where he last fought against Liam Smith 10 and a half pounds so that radical jump you know what I mean other guys, like Amir Khan, when he made his radical jump to fight Canelo, he ended up getting knocked out after doing pretty good in the first couple of rounds. Kel Brook, he got his eye damaged, and it looked like it left him with um, some repercussions when he fought Golovkin. So Canelo was the only one out of the bunch that made a radical weight jump and dominated and won 12 rounds out of 12. You know what I mean? So you got to factor that in. So I'm not really... I don't believe because Canelo didn't badly hurt Chavez Jr. that it's inconceivable that he can hurt Golovkin. Because one, again, Golovkin is not as big to me as Chavez Jr. And he's a better fighter in terms of technique and skill, but he's not as big. And we all know Chavez is at least durable. Even in the Fafara knockout loss, to me, he quit. I think he could have continued. Maybe he would have got stopped if he continued. But... I think he could have came out for another round and see, and but he he, just, he did a no mas like nah, I'm not he did like Gamboa just did. Yeah, you know I mean like I'm not feeling this. I'm not winning. I haven't been winning these rounds and I'm frustrated. And he was coming off a 15 month layoff, but he he wasn't like debilitated where his eyes were rolling in the back of his head. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be a good fight, man. And I'm not saying that Golovkin doesn't have a chance. I know there's a lot of radical people. You guys can do all that in the comment section. 
around these parts we talk about boxing this is boxing talk we make money and we keep it pushing you know what i mean you guys can leave all that crazy stuff it's nothing against either fighter both fighters are entertaining i like canelo's style i, I think canelo's a fantastic fighter and like i said he, he just looks big it's not a bodybuilding contest but it looks like this weight suits him and like i said i don't even know how he was making 154 because it looks like this is more so his, his rightful weight without crunching down. Him and Golovkin on their WBC, when they had WBC titles and they did the mandatory 30-day weigh-ins, they were weighing about the same thing. So clearly both guys are different builds, but around the same size. Golovkin's clearly a lot taller than Canelo, but Canelo just has this pit bull type of body type. like, And he looks his back looks big. You know what I mean? So I hope Golovkin and Golovkin fans aren't expecting Canelo from all the reports of what happened in their sparring. Because again, I don't think Canelo is the same fighter. And you could argue Golovkin's not the same fighter. But to me, just this my opinion, Golovkin fights how I've always seen him fight. You know what I mean? Good fighter, um, strong, straight punches, good jab stronger than most guys he fights stays on top of you excellent with cutting off the ring like you watch Gregor Prosca, Willie Monroe to how he fought Kell Brook I mean they're all pretty much same Canelo's sweet in there and to me Canelo is doing different things that I don't remember him doing like if you look at his defense now he wasn't doing that when he was fighting Alfonso Gomez or uh, Ryan Rhodes and stuff I didn't see him doing that maybe he was playing with some stuff but small glimpses of it but if you watch the the fight with liam smith chavez jr he's he's like pulling his head back pull countering countering with uh hard ass right hands and uh he slipped Cotto's hook and rolled the punch counter with the uppercut i'm, I'm trying to tell y'all canelo has improved he, he's sweet in there you know what i mean and that's just what it is and judging from the pictures you guys seen in the in the hennessy promo He's in damn good shape. This this could be a scrap. Let me know what you guys think. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video. Like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.